yo Coming up, I never had a dollar to my name Wasn't popular, didn't care about the fame All alone, negative thoughts in my brain Sometimes I wonder how I even made it through the pain I want a better life, but some things will never change This a mess of things, made a few mistakes I should've never called my mother names to her face She's the reason why I'm breathing and I'm in this place His upcoming mixtape bumped my ish Hey, hey, yo, what's good, Wix? Hey, what's poppin', man? Just chillin' on my way to get some pizza at the local pizza joint right here, you know? I support mom and pop stuff, man. Everything up, but that's how I do it, man. Hell yeah, man. Yo, I could go for some pizza right now, man. It's about dinner time over here. <laughs> that's what's up. You gotta stay eating, man. I stay hungry, man, so I'm trying to eat out here. <laughs> Yo, man, we feel that, man, and you've been out there grinding, man, for real, with the whole hip-hop scene out of Fresno, but for those that may not know exactly who you are, man, out here on the East Coast, introduce yourself and tell them where you're coming from, man. I go by the name of MC Wicks. I'm coming out of Fresno, CA. Been dedicated to the craft for seven years, and, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to bring back that raw feeling, that soulful feeling. Whenever you hear music nowadays, it doesn't touch your soul, you know what I mean? So, when, when you listen to me, man, it's going to affect your spirit a little bit, and that's what I'm trying to do, man. For real, man. And, and you know, a couple of tracks back, we played Trying to Come Up, which is off your upcoming mixtape, Bump My Ish, man. And, you know, I was just listening to your lyrics, man, and, and just the production on it as well, and you, and you just feel the soul, man. You know, that's coming straight from the ghetto, man. You're talking about real ish that a lot of peeps can relate to, and a lot of peeps, you know, forget where they come from when they make it out here. Yeah, man, a lot of people are going to forget where they come from, uh, and it's sad. There's some people that made it out of my city, but they won't even mention the city no more, you know what I mean? Because we're from a small part of California, and out here they, they tell cats to like, oh, it's better to rep the Bay or it's better to rep LA, like, to be ashamed where you're from, but never that, you know what I mean? Why not? We show love to the hometown. If nobody else is showing love to your city, you got to show love to your city. One hundred percent, man. I, I agree, man. And you know, right now, I gotta say, you're the headliner for Fresno, California, and man. You know, you got a lot of buzz in the local community. Before we get into the music stuff, though, man, I just want to ask, how was growing up in the streets of Fresno, California? To me, it, it, it was good. I mean, there's um. There's positivity and there's negativity. If if you're a square or you're a sucker, you're definitely going to get broke down and you won't be able to make it. But if you're not, you'll be one of the strongest people ever. You know what I mean? There's so much struggle out here and um, it could build it could build you or it could break you. And in my case, it built me. You know what I mean? One hundred. I can stop my way from doing this hip hop stuff. Straight up, man. And, and Fresno, California, you know, ha has a decent hip-hop scene out there. You know, has so many talented people come out of there, such as Planet Asia, Fashan, and many more. And, and, you know, we kind of touched up about it a little bit, about a lot of MCs representing the Bay in L.A. once they finally make their brick breakthrough. But, man, how you feel about other local MCs putting it down for Fresno? So there's got to be, like, some cats that you're not really feeling and some cats that you really are feeling. Oh, uh, yeah, man. As far as that goes... Yeah, man, we got a beautiful scene out here. We got we got a lot of legends that people sleep on. You know what I mean? Like you mentioned, uh, Planet Asia. Yeah. Just have a group called Schoolyard. Y'all need to Google that. But in there, it consists of Shake the Mayor, Super Supreme, Cubic, and I've been working with Cubic a lot. That's a legendary MC. Fast Sean had a group back in the day called Section Eight. That consisted of um, Dark Knight, Graphic, Bravo, more of them see, and there's a lot of people that are under the radar that people need to be looking out for. Shout out to the homegirl Kaleidoscope, holding it down. The scene is good. You know, there's always going to be bootleg rappers everywhere you go. You know, you can't escape the bootlegs. But out here, we got some... The beautiful thing about my scene is there isn't a sound. Everybody has their own sound. Straight up. Fresno style, it does not exist. All the legit MCs that I respect the better have their own style, and that it's so diverse. Absolutely, man. And, and would you say some of the styles, what would you say are some of the styles that you can hear come out of Fresno hip-hop? Like some G-Funk flavor, like the classic West Coast sound, a little bit of the East Coast sound? or. Well, yeah, as far as um, 
smooth stuff, you know what I mean? That yeah. funk stuff, the homie, I mentioned him earlier, Graphic, he goes by the name Omar Horror now. He got the album called Oregon Sessions, and there's actually a song on there called Bring G-Funk Back. Oh, damn. Man, it's like you can put it in and play it front to back, and it's just nothing but straight classic and brings you back to that era where, you know, it was just really smooth. And then we got... We got the MCs, everybody knows right now, Planet Asia, uh -huh. Sean, our lyrical wordsmiths, you know what I mean? Straight up, man. And, and who would you say are some of your inspirations? And it can be outside of Fresno, too, within within this hip-hop game. Um, well, I always, I always mention the three bigs, you know what I mean? Big Al, Big Pun, Biggie Smalls, <laughs> I'm not Fashion, Planet Asia, uh, those are some Fresno cats. Turbin is a Fresno cat too, man. Man, one of my favorites. But yeah, there's a lot of Rakim did his thing. KRS is a major inspiration, though, on some real, real ish. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. And so, what, at what age did you begin to develop your talent for rapping and writing lyrics, man? Because I know, I know, uh, if you don't mind me asking this over the air, exactly how old are you, man? Because I know you're a bit younger than me, man, but you already got close to two feet deep in the game, man, and you out there doing your thing hardcore, bro. Yeah, man, I'm 20 right now. I'm about to be um, 21 on April 28th. Hey, happy birthday, man. Early early. Yeah, thank you, man. I've been, I've been doing the MC thing since, like, since 13. Oh, damn. And... It all started just having fun, you know, somebody was spitting some freestyles and I jumped, I jumped in the cypher, you know what I mean, just playing around and I actually got a reaction and people were actually rocking with me, so once I got that energy and I connected with the crowd, I knew that's what I wanted, you know what I mean? Absolutely, man. So, you know, you're like, let's go, you know, full throttle with it. And you did because in last year, 2014, you released your biggest EP to date so far. Never Had a Dollar, which is now up on iTunes and CD Baby, with production done by K Pizzle and Sean J. Can you tell us a little bit about how you linked up with K Pizzle and, and what you guys wanted to do with the production for Never Had a Dollar? Like, what was the vibe that you guys were trying to produce? K Pizzle, um, I met a man uh, before MC, and you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of hip hop, period, but I'm definitely a big fan of the scene. So I'm always at all these shows, and there's a legendary group out here um, that go by the name Alpha Force. Uh -huh. Got them featured on, on the Never Had a Dollar EP on a song called Show Respect. It's the last fight. But um, I went to a few of their shows, and I always supported them heavy. And when I go there, I talk to K. Pizzo a little bit. And he started seeing my hustle, seeing my grind, seeing my passion and my vision. And he reached out to me to do a whole EP. And the crazy thing about that EP is originally it was supposed to be put on the internet just for the free download as like a promo thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I was in the pressure of a limited supply of uh, hard copies, yeah. like 50 or 100 or something, and then just leave it for the online. And it's so, so good, and there's so much support behind it that we just made it official, you know what I mean? Yeah. That there really wasn't no concept. It was just... We just went in and had fun. We, we were just making hip hop, but I noticed when you listen to a lot of the joints, you can hear the struggle. And I have the track Never Had a Dollar on there. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a perfect title. It, it sums up everything right there. Straight up, man. You know, that was going to lead me into my other question, man. You're like, in my opinion, man, you have a variety of topics on Never Had a Dollar, you know, such as the track Never Had a Dollar. You talk about the struggle and being broke in the hustle, the tracks like Rappers Can't Spit Well, and of course, your track You Better Pay Me. So, can you tell us a little bit about your track, like Rappers Can't Spit Well? I know that's a track probably towards all the bootleg rappers out there, and, and um, would you say the track's kind of directed towards rappers in Fresno or all over? I would say all over, but there's definitely some in Fresno. Um, really, it's for the people that... See, it's one thing to rap and have fun, you know what I mean? Yeah. Another thing to put the label on yourself that you are a rapper, or you are an MC, and then you go on the mic and you just play around, and you're like running out of breath, and you ain't even performing right, and you're off some Hollywood stuff, like you don't even care. You <laughs> And you don't care about the people. You do your little set, and you leave right away. 
from like big old ego. So it's really there's people that play with the game that have an ego like they're in the game, and it's really towards those kind of people. Like, don't don't expect anyone to take you serious if you don't take yourself serious. You know what I mean? One hundred percent, man. And you know, you mentioned something, man, about peeps, you know, going up onto the mic, spitting a few lyrics, and then just bouncing, man. That's mad funny, cause just last week, you you know, of ESP, man. And, and Sean Byrne, they were performing, man, and legit, like, guy that was on before them went on performing, man, and, like, we were supporting him, man, we were supporting what he was doing, and right after he did his show, man, he just bounced, he just dipped, he was like, the hell with y'all, and it's like, wow, dude, you didn't even stay for the for the headliners that are about to rock the stage, you know? Yeah, I mean, the only way I, I would give it a pass is if you really have a legitimate reason to leave, but a lot of people usually don't. And the, and, the, and the worst thing about it is they actually get their whole crowd and tell their whole crowd to leave. And to me, I feel like if someone books you for a show, you got to respect them as a promoter and you got to respect the other artists that are grinding too. Like, if you want to you wouldn't want everyone to be gone because they took their little crowd somewhere else. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If you, don't, if you ain't giving support to hip-hop, you ain't going to get it from hip-hop. You know what I mean? 100. What you put in, you get out. Absolutely, man. You know, that's so real, man. Hey, you know, man, having someone like you calling to the show, man, you know, I heard some previous interviews of you calling to the shows, man. I got to say, you say some of the realest-ish ever, man. I mean, just putting truth out there, man, and knowledge. But I'll, I'll, let's go back to some of your music, man, and get people to really know who you are, man. And, and on Never Had a Dollar, you have serious tracks on there and tracks towards rappers that can't spit well, but you also tend to put on this... I don't know how to exactly say it. Maybe like a player pimp like persona, but in a humorous way with tracks like "You Better Pay Me" and and like one of my personal favorites, which isn't on the EP, "Big Nasty." And many people praise you for some of the comments that you make on your tracks on social media. You know, just kind of like stating your opinion, saying whatever you want. Could you tell us a little bit about that, man? The whole big nasty thing, you know, it's always just been a little part of my personality, and um, it reflects. You know, definitely that I'm a big deal with like confidence and style and I'm a little comical and, you know, I just have fun with it. I'm a free spirit, but at the same time, it represents the, the, the negative side too. It's like fucking, there's like these vibes that they'll be like, oh man, he's so good, he's so nasty, he's so disgusting, but you know, I live up to that and I, I embrace that, you know what I mean? Hell yeah, man, for real. So you take it for your advantage, man, and, and, and it works. Well, whatever anyone's trying to turn negative, I'm going to flip it into a positive, you know. And, and it definitely worked. Best believe, you know what I mean? I, I, had some, I had some good things happen for sure off of this game and this knowledge that I kicked for sure. For sure. Mix it on a beat, yeah. I love my city, but it's just so rough. Got dirty cops, yeah, they all corrupt. Wanna profile, throw us in handcuffs for no reason And they treat us like heathens Like you in the neighborhood and you be thieving Sometimes I feel like they don't wanna see you breathing Cause they so evil, acting like demons Craving in the head, got them ego trips Wanna see you flip so they can empty your clip Bucking at your head, might leave a few in your ribs Sometimes this even happens in front of the kids It's sad that they have to witness this It's an everyday struggle and it's not gonna change unless you work Hard and do your thing. Don't be stupid, little homie. Use your brain before you end up dead. I get stuck in a cage.